In this video, I'll briefly discuss getting started using the Jump Genomic Starter. I have the starter open here on my desktop, and the way you use this Genomic Starter is by choosing the category and then the subcategory that you want to use. We'll start in Studies. It's not necessary that you set up a study in order to use Jump Genomics. You can skip this and head straight to the Import button if you want. However, setting up studies can be useful for organizing your data files, especially if you have many different studies to keep track of. Once you set up a study, so add a study, look for the data sets that you want to add to it, and so on. Once you set up a study, then when you're using something like a workflow, and let's click on one here like the basic RNA-seq workflow, if you've set up a study, you'd have a button at the top that would give you an example to choose. And when you choose that example, it would look a little bit more like if I click the load button down here. Here you can see that uh, some of the sample files, file folders, names of variables are populating already. So you'll get some extra information populating or more accessible in some of these workflow windows or some of these process windows if you've set up a study. So a study can be sort of a shortcut. It can help you organize your data and it can also be a bit of a shortcut in filling out some of those windows. But again, you don't have to use a study. You can go straight to the import and begin by loading your data here. But whether or not you use studies, you will need to use import. This is where you can create your experimental design file, point to your raw data files, point to an annotation file if you have one, and ask Jump Genomics to collect all that information into the appropriate data files for other analyses. These are the types of files that you're going to need when you're using Jump Genomics. First, you're going to need a special file called an experimental design file, which the import menu can actually help you create. Here's an example of an experimental design file. In this experiment, there were six mouse samples, and this first column, the file column, lists the file names for the raw data files, which in this case are SAM files. The strain is a grouping variable. Array is a required column giving each unique sample a unique ID number. Column name is naming which sample is in each file, and the sample name is a more meaningful label to use to refer to each sample in the analysis output. When you create this file, this experimental design file, be sure to save it as a SAS file type, so a .sas7bdat file extension, so that you don't run into errors later on. It's always a good practice to save this as a SAS file extension. And here are the raw data files for this experiment. The data files are these, the SAM files here for the six samples. The annotation file is here in this text, and it shows us information about where the transcript starts and ends and what to name that transcript. We wouldn't need an experimental design data set in this case, but often you will need the experimental design data set. To see if this experimental design data set or an annotation file is required for a process, because sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't, you just need to be in that process. So for example, in import next-gen sequencing with generating counts with the SAM files that I have, if I click on this, I will see asterisks in front of the required things. So at the bottom it says asterisk required parameter. So this is indicating I need an experimental design file. I need to point out the folder where I have those raw files, the SAM files. I'll need to name an output folder, but it doesn't require on this first page any experimental design data set. On the annotation tab, if I've selected genes as my summarization method for SAM counts, I'll actually see that the annotation file becomes required. If I select fixed bin size, it isn't required because I'm choosing where those transcripts start and end. So you'll see that the dialog boxes will actually prompt you for the pieces of information that you need. So again, you'll often need an experimental design file, at least for expression data, and there are some tools in the import menu that can help you create this from your raw data files. Note, though, that most genetics data can be read in from a text file or VCF file without the need for the experimental design file. 
so it will be common for expression data to use an experimental design file and rare for genetics data to require that file. You'll need your raw data files, sometimes you'll need an annotation file, and very often you'll need an experimental design data set, which again is sort of created through the import process in many cases. And then all those things together are going to create a system of data files that are referencing each other that Jump Genomics is going to use in the other analyses. One last note about the data files for Jump Genomics. Some menus are going to refer to tall or wide data sets. Tall data sets will have the samples as the columns and that molecular entity that you're measuring as the rows. Wide data sets will be the opposite. Here is an example of part of the imported and merged data and annotation for the mouse experiment we've been looking at. We can see the six samples are the columns and the rows are the genes of interest. The corresponding annotation information also got added to this file, so you can see that the first columns are from the annotation information. Because the samples are in the columns and the genes are in the rows, this is a tall data set. If you need to switch between the two types, there's actually a button in Jump Genomics that will do this for you. You go to the Genomics tab, then to SAS Dataset Utilities, Tables, and here's transpose tall to wide or wide to tall. So there are lots of these utilities built in to make this as simple as possible for you. Okay, let's look at the workflows now. The workflows are a nice place to see some common data cleaning and analysis options presented in a very specific step-by-step -step format. This is a really good place to see a sampling of what you could do with Jump Genomics or to explore the functionality on sample data sets. You might also start here with your own data. From the workflow options, you'll see a path of data cleaning and analyses that will include many commonly used steps. However, many researchers will want to tailor their process beyond what's included in these workflows. There are basic and there are advanced workflows. And again, they're pulling from a number of these features, these analytical processes that show up in the categories here or, or the subcategories. So the basic genetics workflow is going to contain many things from this genetics list of categories and options. So the workflows are sort of a, a simpler entry point into Jump Genomics where you're not as overwhelmed with all the options and it presents them in a, in a clear path. But you may find yourself at some point deciding to skip the workflows altogether and create your own analysis process by using your own combinations of those individual analytical process category and some subcategory buttons one after another or iteratively back and forth. For example, you could use import and then you might go down to expression. You might choose some quality control options and then choose to normalize the data, then rerun quality control options and so on. Some of those iterative things are actually going to be a part of the workflows, but when you're ready to make your own process, you can use the options down below. So for today, for this introduction to the genomic starter, we're really only going to talk about the studies, import, and workflows as a quick overview, because this is a great place to just get started. So in the workflows, if we look at the basic workflows, and we use this uh, basic RNA-seq workflow. This is the workflow I would use for the mouse data experiment we were looking at. And if I'm not ready yet to get my data in, uh, I just want to play around with Jump Genomics and see what functionality is available here. If I scroll to the bottom of any of these process windows, you'll see these Run, Save, Load, Apply, Reset, and Cancel buttons. If you click on load, this is going to give you an option for an example to play around with. So this is the best way to start using Jump Genomics, is to open it up, click on workflows, find the workflow that matches what you think you're interested in, and then go to the bottom of that dialog window, click load, and then if there is a sample available, it's going to suggest any samples that are available. In this case, we only have one, so I'm going to say OK. There's not a choice I need to make here. And now it's showing me where this input SAS dataset is saved. It's showing me the available variables. So this is a list of the variables 
and I can now put them into roles to use in my analysis. So if I want to split my analysis out by something, I can put something here. If I want to label by something, maybe label by the name, I could add that here. If I want to keep variables in my output or merge them with annotation data, I can specify that here. If I have a chromosome variable or a position variable, here's the output folder where we're going to drop all my results. Here's an output name for my workflow. And when I'm using any of these processes, you'll notice tabs at the top. You want to work from left to right through the tabs. So top to bottom within each tab, and then left to right from tab to tab. You need to go through every tab, make the selections you want, and when you get to the end, everything will keep saving as you flip from tab to tab. When you get to the very end, then you click Run. So in this case, I start in general, and I see what variables are available. I can make selections if I want to. If I want to know more about what does by variables mean, I can click on this question mark right next to by variables. This takes me into the support, the help documentation, and it tells me about what the by variables are for. So it's really easy to find help by clicking on the question marks that appear next to each thing that you can do in Jump. If I want to know what is this checkbox for input data is log transformed, I can click on that question mark. It's going to take me directly to that part of the help menu. Likewise, at the top, there's a process description button. This is another help that takes me to the whole RNA-seq workflow. So if I click on process description, it's going to take me to that the big level of this entire platform. So the process description is a good way to get help. All the question marks are a good way to get help. And then keep in mind that you want to Go to the bottom and click load if you want a sample to play around with. It also gives you an idea. Uh, when you click load, it will fill out all of the things that are critical for that example. So I didn't need to add something into label. I could leave that off because if it didn't automatically populate when I clicked load, it wasn't critical for this platform. So this is also a way to learn how to use the roles and understand how variables are working in this platform. The load button is a great way to see examples in Jump Genomics. So if we go through general and then experimental design, here we see the experimental design data set. This was a case where that was necessary. If I want to look at that data set, I can click open and I'll see that data set. This is exactly the example I've been showing you. I can again choose to move things into these boxes, but I don't need to in this case. If I go to QC and normalization, I can see that I've got some selections already made for this example. So I'm going to do a distribution analysis. I'll look at the correlations and principal variance components analysis. I'm going to do a shifted log two transformation. Again, click on question marks if you want to know what these things are doing. And then I'm going to use one normalization method, the TMM. I'm going to run the QC analysis both before and after I normalize the data so that I can compare what my results look like before and after using this normalization method. Then I'll go to ANOVA. I see that I have one class variable that's a categorical variable, so this is groups. So mouse type is the type of mouse. I'm going to use that as a fixed effect in the model. I'm not looking at any other random effects. I can always expand these buttons if I want to look for more options. These disclosure buttons are expandable. That was true on this tab as well. I could look at data filtering here. I can look at options. When I go to the LS means, this is where I would look at differences. If I do find that the groups differ from each other, which groups differ? I can do all pairwise differences, simple differences, differences with a control. Again, use question marks to learn more. I can go then to the multiple testing tab. I'll use the false discovery rate as my method with an overall alpha of 0.05. And then annotation at the end, if I open this disclosure button, had I another annotation data set, I could choose it here. I've actually already used the annotation when I read in my data, so that experimental des design data set includes a lot of annotation information. If I had additional annotation information I wanted to use, I could add that here. And then when I'm ready to run, I can click Run. I'll see this SAS running processes box. I can click Stop if I want to end it sooner. Right now it's showing me what stage it's in from those things I asked for. It's also showing me that it's going to run this workflow with all these different stages. So I can see what part of the process it's in. 
I cannot open anything else while it's running. If I open another process, that's going to disrupt this process, so I need to just let this run. And then we'll look at the output in just a moment. So here's the output. It output into a journal for us. If I click on these buttons, so a journal is a, a way to save your reports in Jump. It's a special Jump file extension, a .jrn file extension. So this journal, if I click on Open Workflow Builder dialog, it's going to reopen the, the uh, Workflow Builder dialog. So I can ask to reorder things, or I can change things, I can edit the options, and so on. I can also reopen that workflow dialog, this one that I have in the background. If I click on this, it just opens that dialog again. And then here's my six things I asked it to do. I asked for a distribution analysis, correlation and principal variance components analysis, the TMM normalization, and then I said, oh, and then do this stuff again after the normalization. So do it before and do it after, and then at the end, an ANOVA. So I can click through these and look at the output. This was before normalization. If I click on the same thing after normalization, I see a little bit of a difference. They are more toward each other, and so I can go through these results. Okay, so this is a great time to take a break and play around with sample data yourself in the workflows. Or if you have your own data files and are ready to start working on your own analyses, then go to the Import button and follow the instructions for the data type that you have. Use the Load button for examples even here. So let's say uh, I have Illumina data, uh, microRNA. If I scroll to the bottom and click Load, I have an example here. So I'll click OK and I'll see it populate. So it tells me what available files are in this folder. So I can see what settings are selected in the sample settings. And also remember to use the little question marks. When you aren't sure what something is asking for, there's going to be more details in the help, and those question marks will take you directly to that part of the help. Each data type when you're importing has its own quirks. So use the help documentation. It will point out special or different things that you need to know or to do for the particular data type that you want to import. And if you want to learn more about using Jump Genomics, keep watching the videos in this Getting Started in Jump Genomics series, or check out other resources linked on our web pages. Two of the pages that will be helpful to you are jump.com slash jumpg and jump.com slash genomics. If you scroll to the bottom of jump.com slash genomics, you'll see a learn more and you'll find links to some other resources as well. Good luck getting started.